So I've been asked to determine the equation of this graph. And the way I look at this, um, I look at this and I know because it's a bunch of parabola looking things that this is either a secant or a cosecant. And there's a vertical asymptote here. Okay. And there's a vertical asymptote here. Okay. And what's going to happen is these peaks and valleys are going to be connected by a sine or a cosine equation. So what I do is I just go ahead and I say, okay, that's 4. That's 4. That's negative 6. Okay. And so 4, right, that's negative 6. And that's positive 4. And so I look and I say, okay, what's that total height? That total height, right, from negative 6 to 4, that's 10. So my A term is 5. My A term is 5. That's half of this distance. More importantly, my line of symmetry is going to be at negative 1. Okay, my line of symmetry is going to be at negative 1. What that means is my sine or cosine graph is going to go here. It's going to go through that magic point there. It's going to come up. It's going to go back down through that magic point there that we call a zero. It's going to keep going, you know, yada, 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 yada. Now, I need to take what's here in green. If I can write the equation to this, I can write the equation to this, okay? And, and my brain, I look at this and I say, well, there's a peak right here. And whenever there's a peak, that's a cosine graph. So I say, okay, to me, this looks like a cosine graph. This looks like a cosine graph, cosine graph. And so the answer to this guy is going to be a secant graph, okay? Because secant and cosine are uh, reciprocals. So, uh, okay, well, if I can write the equation of this cosine, the A, the B, the C, and the D terms, the, the horizontal and vertical stretches and the horizontal and vertical shifts are going to be identical to the secant term. So the first thing I notice is this guy starts at a peak. Okay, well, if it starts at a peak, that means there's no horizontal and vertical shift. Okay, or excuse me, there's no horizontal shift. So C is equal to zero. There's no horizontal shift. Uh, and, and just if you haven't watched my other videos, I'm using the um, y equals a cosine b x minus c plus d. This is our vertical stretch, our horizontal stretch, our horizontal translation, and our vertical translation. If you've had this in an algebra course before, I'm using those, those letters as my kind of litmus test for this. So c is 0. D. Um, pretty easy. It's got a peak of 4 and a valley of negative 6. Um, a is 5, uh, so that means it should have a peak of 5. It's been moved down 1. It should have a valley of negative 5. It's been moved down 1, so D is minus 1. Okay, so I've got C, D, and A. The last thing I need is B. Uh, and B is really easy. The period of sine and cosine and cosecant and secant is 2 pi over b. And the period is how long it takes to get from here to here, from a peak to a peak or a valley to a valley. Well, I'm going to use a valley on my green graph. Uh, this valley is at negative 2 pi, and this valley is at positive 2 pi, so this is a total distance of 4 pi. So the period is 2 pi over b, which equals 4 pi. Okay, well, 2 pi over b equals 4 pi, so that tells me b equals 1 half. This is a horizontal stretch, a horizontal stretch. So if I know a, b, c, and d, I can now write my secant equation. And that secant equation is going to be y equals 5 secant 1 half x minus 1. And that equation will give me this original graph that's in black. It'll give me these parabola looking things that go here, here, and here. Okay? So it's a fun little thing to do. Uh, it's very much like writing the equation for a cosine or a sine graph. And if you have any questions, please let me know.